I've been making games for a number of years, and I recently decided to try my hand at being a full-time indie game developer. One of the reasons I felt comfortable taking this leap is that I've settled into a very comfortable set of tools and workflow that allow me to be super productive. I want to share these tools and this workflow with you in this video. Hopefully what I share will help you become more productive yourself. The tools covered in this video are the tools that I'm currently using to build Gunforged, which you can wishlist using the link in the description below. However, making a game in 2024 and into 2025 is not just going to be about building your game. It's also going to be about producing content about your game for social media in order to build an audience. So I'm going to cover some marketing tools as well. Without further introduction, let's get right into the software I use. I exclusively use Godot to build my games. Godot is a game engine that is free and open source. It's MIT licensed, which means that you can basically do whatever you want with it. There's no licensing fees, no registration, no sign up. You can download and immediately start making your game. Godot is easy to use. It comes with a lot of out of the box functionality, so you spend minimal time having to write your own functionality. But Godot also offers an incredible amount of flexibility, so you get a nice balance between control and also solutions that are ready to use. The developer experience with Godot is awesome. I find that the node system is really intuitive and allows you to build complex scenes out of individual modular parts. You essentially find a node that offers functionality for your scene or object, put it into your scene tree, write a minimal script to leverage its APIs, and you can have something working relatively fast. And this style of composing scenes is also highly scalable. GDScript, which is Godot's scripting language, is easy to pick up and use, especially with recent improvements to the scripting capabilities in Godot 4. I wrote my most recent game jam entry, Globins, using GDScript, and I'm probably going to use GDScript for the game I make after Gunforged. Give Godot a try. You have absolutely nothing to lose except maybe a minute while the download finishes. For Gunforged, I use c -sharp scripting with Godot. As such, using an external IDE is required. If you're unaware, IDE means Integrated Development Environment. I've tried traditional IDEs like Visual Studio and Rider, but I always come back to VS Code. VS Code is also free and has a ton of extensions and customizability. You can easily change your theme. Here, I'm using Dracula, folder and file icons, fonts, and so much more. There's also a nearly endless list of community-made extensions. Of course, for C-sharp development, I use the C-sharp extensions. However, there are a bunch of other extensions that are great, such as To-Do Tree, which shows all of your to-do comments across all of your files. VS Code is usable for basically any language. I use it very commonly for doing web development, for example. It's even a great editor for plain text files due to its powerful search and replace features. Let's talk about project management. If you're going to make a game, you probably need some way of organizing your thoughts and plans. For some games, simple note-taking is perfectly adequate. For note-taking, I recommend the Obsidian note-taking app. Obsidian is also free and stores your notes in a vault on your hard drive, meaning that you have ownership over your notes. Obsidian uses markdown editing, which is a markup language that allows you to easily insert headers, links, lists, and other elements using plain text. This makes writing pretty notes relatively easy. There are there are also community plugins that you can browse and install to enhance your experience based on your needs. For larger projects, especially projects that take longer than a few months or projects that require collaboration with a team, then this video's sponsor ClickUp is a perfect option for you. I've been using ClickUp recently to organize some of my projects and it is an excellent tool. ClickUp gives you all the tools you need to stay organized and productive while you work on your game. Here are some of the cool things that I like about it. First, it's free, so go to tryclickup.co slash firebelly to get started. The link for that is in the description below. After getting into ClickUp, you'll want to look at the lists feature, which is essentially a Kanban board where you can track development tasks. What's really awesome about ClickUp is that it's extremely versatile in its customizability. You can add any lanes or columns you want, and you can also add custom fields to each card for your own organization purposes. Another feature that is exceedingly valuable for game developers is the Forms feature. You can create a feedback form and add any fields pertaining to the information you want to collect. When you're satisfied with the form setup, you can share the link to this form with your players. This is a great way to accept gameplay feedback or to allow players to file bug reports. Every response to the form gets added as a task in your task list or Kanban board, which makes triaging issues and feedback really easy. ClickUp is absolutely jam-packed with features. There's way too much to explore here in this video, but use the link in the description below to sign up and try it out. ClickUp offers something for everyone and is a great all-in-one project management solution for solo game developers and teams. 
Git is another important and, I believe, essential tool for game developers. Do yourself a favor and sign up for a free GitHub account and learn how to get a repository set up and working with a Git client of your choice. I don't have time to do a full Git tutorial here, but what you should know is that Git is a version control system. GitHub, on the other hand, is a service that can host your Git repositories. A repository is essentially just your project folder. What's so special about Git is that you add your work to the repository by writing commits. The commit will contain only the changes that have been made since the last commit. If you do this often, like after every feature is complete, you will have a nice history of everything that has ever changed in your project. You can go back to any commit at any point in time and get an exact copy of what the code was like at that point in time. This is great also for error recovery. If you make some broad changes to your game but totally break something, you can comb through the history to undo the changes. Or if you mess up super bad, you can just completely discard your changes and get right back to the state of the most recent commit. GitHub as a service gives you easy access to your repository from any device and also gives you the security of knowing that your project is backed up to a place where you will virtually never lose it. We all know ChatGPT, so I'll be brief here. What I want to call out specifically with ChatGPT is that it's usually pretty good at writing very specific code. For instance, here I am asking it to write a quantize shader for the Godot shading language. It does so almost flawlessly. So for very precise or specific shaders or algorithms, this is a great tool to use rather than trying to write tricky shaders or algorithms yourself. For creating the pixel art for my games, I use a sprite. Pixel art is great because it takes relatively little effort to get decent at, and it doesn't take very long to produce. Asprite is the perfect tool for creating this pixel art. It's got every feature you will want and need, and more. You can draw sprites and animate them. It's got a layer system, which is great for non-destructive editing. You can save and load color palettes, and you can export sprites in a variety of formats, from sprite sheets to individual files. And it's extensible. There are all kinds of community scripts available for you to automate some processes. Asprite is a paid app, but I think the $20 price tag is a steal for such a great piece of software. One of the hardest things to source as an indie game developer is sound effects and music. For sound effects, I use the GDC Sonus audio bundles, which are many gigabytes of all kinds of sound effects. This is a perfect way to get kickstarted with a sound effects library that is totally free. However, searching through this library on your hard drive can be difficult, so I use UltraSearch, which is a tool that allows you to search directories for files. Here I am searching for audio files within my sound effects library that contain the word hit in their names. I can pre you the results right from this window and copy them over to my game as I find them. Another great place for sound effects is itch.io. Just search for sound effects and you'll find all kinds of packs. Some of these are paid, but some of these are also free. Always check the license on the files. You ideally want to look for a license that specifically allows for commercial use, meaning that you can sell a game that uses the sounds. You can similarly find music on itch.io. Another great resource for music is freepd.com, which offers exclusively public domain music. However, for a serious game development effort, I almost always hire somebody to compose music. This can be costly, but worth it in my opinion, since music is core to the identity of a game. I find that Fiverr and Upwork are great places to find contractors. If you're on a strict budget and want something simple, then Beatbox is a great alternative option. You can produce decent music without much musical knowledge for free. So those are the tools that I use specifically for developing games. Let's now talk a bit about some tools for marketing. You might want to start a YouTube channel where you can post entertaining content of your game like devlogs or short gameplay clips. This of course is not strictly necessary for the success of your game, but it can definitely help. So here are the tools and workflow I use to produce videos for YouTube. My video editor of choice for long form videos is DaVinci Resolve. It's free to use, but you can also buy a license which unlocks some useful features like hardware accelerated rendering. DaVinci Resolve contains more functionality than I can ever hope to understand, but for making devlogs for YouTube, it's an absolute breeze. For screen recordings and streaming, I use OBS. OBS is a great tool to learn generally. There are a lot of customization options, and it can be a little bit tricky to understand everything that's going on. But once you get your scene set up, it's easy to get recordings of your game. But you'll need to process the raw video that you record. 
For that, you can either use DaVinci Resolve or you can use Handbrake, which is a small program that can re-render any video to a much smaller file size suitable for sharing on other social media. Another tool that's great for quickly producing videos for social media is Lossless Cut. It does what the name suggests. You can cut a video of any length down to a specific section and re-export only the section without losing quality. This tool, in combination with Handbrake, is a great way to take a snippet out of a larger video to publish on social media. And finally, let's talk a little bit about hardware. This is somewhat of a bonus section because you can absolutely do everything I mentioned in this video on low-end hardware. However, if it's in your budget, I recommend getting some quality upgrades. Personally, I recommend a modern mid to high-end NVIDIA GPU. NVIDIA cards are great both for gaming and rendering videos. I have a GTX 4070 and it's been serving me well for media production and gaming. For recording my voice, I've got the classic Shure SM7B dynamic microphone, which I use for all of my voiceovers. This is paired with a Focusrite USB audio interface to accept the XLR microphone connection and convert the signal to digital for recording with OBS. You'll also want to learn how to apply EQ to your voice to make it pop, which I encourage you to research further. And finally, I have my own private cloud. I'm using a Synology NAS, which stands for Network Attached Storage, to which I sync all of my data. And the NAS syncs nightly to Backblaze for extra redundancy. A NAS is great for people, not just game developers, who have a lot of digital data they want to preserve. All of my game projects are backed up to it. All of my photos, documents, game development assets, and even all of my raw video footage from all of my videos is backed up to that device. If your lifestyle is dependent upon the production of digital media, you absolutely want and, in my opinion, need this level of redundancy to protect yourself. So those are all the tools I use for my day-to-day -day game development. Comment below to let me know which tool was the most helpful to you, or if anything surprised you. I hope you found some of this information useful. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to support my work, you can purchase one of my courses, you can wishlist my upcoming game Gunforged on Steam, and you can sign up for my email list at firebelly.com. The links for all of those things are in the description below.